At least I hope it is, because um, <laughs> that's all I know to talk about today. Um, what I want to do is I want to start out by just talking about the class in very general terms, just give an introduction of the class, how it's going to be structured, and, and so on, and then get into the material itself. All right, um, get into the get into the fun stuff because reading the syllabus isn't terribly fun, but the other material in the class is a lot more fun. So we'll try to get to that as quick as possible. Um, <clears throat> are all of you familiar with using Angel? Is there anyone who is not familiar with using Angel, the course management tool for this class? Okay. Um, <coughs> if you do have questions, um, you, can, uh, you can let me know uh, in LAM. Um, all the material for this class is uh, contained on Angel. And uh, so you'll be getting the assignments on Angel. I won't hand anything out, um, you know, any papers out. Uh, anything I have, you'll, you'll get an Angel, and you'll turn stuff in uh, in Angel. You may notice right off the bat that we're in a different room um, than typical. Um, this class originally was going to have a student at the North Ridgeville, or students at the North Ridgeville campus, and I'm not sure how that worked out. That's why I'm looking up there at an empty room. So I'm not sure if there's an issue uh, with that or what. But at any rate, regardless of whether our friends in North Ridgeville join us or not, um, I record these classes and I post the videos to YouTube. And that serves a couple of uh, uh, goals of mine. First of all, it helps the students in the online class. There's an online section of the class. Uh, in fact, if you go in to Angel and you look to see, you know, the people are in the class, you'll see a list bigger than, uh, number than, than you see here. You know, there's about 10 or 12 people that are enrolled in the campus section of the class. There's probably 20 some that are enrolled on the online section of the class. So I just combine them all into one page and that way we can share resources. So the students in the online section of the class can see uh, a recording of the, the lectures I do in class and can see the example files that I have and so on and so forth. So that's a benefit to them. It's also a benefit to you because if you have the flu, you know, being wintertime or your car won't start or whatever, and you can't make it in, you can always go and view the lectures um, online. So it's sort of a win-win proposition. So I like doing that. I post them up on YouTube. They're usually available like later in the day. So today's Tuesday, you know, midday Tuesday. Figure out by Tuesday afternoon, late, later Tuesday afternoon, it should be posted um, uh, for, for you to view. Now, um, you are welcome to ask questions um, at any time in this class. If you want, you can press the little thing in front of you, and what that will do is that will turn the microphone on and turn the camera on you. I've yet to ever have a student actually do that, all right, because everyone is camera shy, of course. Um, so what I try to do, and what I try to remember to do, is repeat your question so it will be picked up on, uh, on the recording. So like if you ask, <clears throat> you know, how do you make a link again? You know, if I just go into the answer, people don't know what the question was if they're just watching the recording. So I, I try to repeat that. You are welcome to come to any of my labs. Now this semester I uh, am actually teaching a lot of classes online. So I only have one other lab, and that is this evening, and I'll give details of that. But for the students that are in the online class, uh, even if you're taking the online class, you're welcome to come in to the lab here. Um, or you're welcome to sit in on a class, even if you're taking it. So I try to, I, you know, even though there's an online in the classroom section, I sort of try to combine them and treat them as one. All right, let's go and let's log on to Angel and let's look at some of the highlights uh, in Angel. I don't want to read the syllabus line by line to you because that would be boring, but I do want to point out some things for you. All right, let's go. To Angel and log on. Your screen, of course, will look a little different than mine because you're in different classes than the ones I teach, plus being an instructor I have different uh, permissions on these things. Notice the semester has already started, I'm already behind because I have 
an email from a student and a bulletin board posting. All right. Um, let's go and look here. The way that my class is organized is most of the stuff, most of the materials of the class are on the content tab. All right. Um, so let's go over there. There's other things for communicate and report, so you can see your grades or send me an email and so on. But most of the material of the class is on the content tab. I have a getting started. Please read this first. That's mainly intended for the online students, so you don't really need to need that, read that uh, if you're in a campus student. So I'm pretty much going over the stuff that's contained in there uh, today. Course information um, contains syllabus, communication methods, contact organization, and a blurb about copyright for educational purposes. Like in this class, you might want to use an image from a website, for example, on one of your projects. Are you allowed to do that legally? Well, because we're in an educational environment, we have more flexibility than you would have if you were, say, starting a company and you wanted to use an image on a website. So the answer in general is yes, you can. But you have to follow some restrictions. You can't use an unlimited number of pictures from a website. And you do have to give credit. Just like if you were writing a term paper, you'd give credit to the source that you had. Uh, you'd give credit to the, to, to the source of your image. Well, we can talk more about that later on. That particularly comes into play when we start discussing images. Um, we'll come back to go over the syllabus and communication methods um, in a minute here. Each week is going to have its own folder. And in the folder, there will be um, a summary to do this week of sort of an overview of the topics that we're going to cover this week and just some, in, you know, some additional notes about the week. And then there will be a lab assignment in there, typically. There isn't necessarily a lab assignment every week, but most weeks there are. All right, so on occasion, there may not be a lab assignment, but for the most part, the lab assignments will be in here. Now, after I finish a class and I get the recording of it and I get the example files of it, I will post them to this folder as well. So, in other words, today, the video of today's lecture, the link to it will be posted um, in this folder. So there'll be a folder for every week of the term. Resources are a bunch of links that I have accumulated over the semester. Uh, over the semesters, since I've taught this course, um, of useful things. And throughout the course, I'll probably refer and I'll say there's a, there's a resource in Angel that talks about this, and, and I'll probably refer to and go visit some of those sites during my classes, uh, during, during the lectures as well. Um, they're just beneficial resources. Uh, I add things to them as I discover them. Um, unfortunately, some of them may be no longer in existence, so you might encounter a dead link here or there. But for the most part, um, those are some valuable resources. Semester project um, relates to um, your project that you'll do. Instead of a final exam, you have a semester project. And um, we won't talk about that today, but I urge you to read about it and sort of maybe start getting ideas of the topic um, that you want to do your semester project on. So we'll come back to this probably within a couple weeks. All right, so we, we won't talk about that today, but I'm just pointing it out. A discussion forum is a place for you to post questions um, that occur between classes. And in fact, online students can post questions there as well. And you're welcome to try answering the questions there too. One good way to learn material is to, to, try, to try to answer questions that, that your fellow students might have. Um, if you have a question between classes or online students, you can either email them to me through Angel, or you can um, post to the discussion board. If it's something that relates specifically to you, you're probably better off sending email. But if it's something that you think the rest of the class can benefit from, then post it to the discussion board. Don't spend too much time agonizing one way or another. Just pick a thing and, and do it, either email it or discussion forum. But that's sort of my guidelines. Um, a, an email is kind of like pulling me aside after class and asking me a question one-on-one -on -one personally, or asking me a question in lab about something that you're having trouble with. 
Uh, posting to the discussion forum is more like raising your hand in class so the whole class can hear the question and hear the answer. Bottom line is, regardless, if you have questions, get them answered. All right, let's uh, dream part spark instructions relate to um, not terribly relevant for this class, but it relates to students being able to download um, freely some software from Microsoft. And if you've been enrolled in previous semesters, you probably have an account. I don't think your account's set up if you've been enrolled, um, uh, if this is like the first semester you've been enrolled in the CISS class. All right, let's go back to course information. Content organization and copyright, again, we won't talk about that now. I'm going to go backwards and talk about communication methods, then back up to the syllabus, and then we'll get to the good stuff. In, and I don't expect you to be able to, to see this pretty well. Let me try turning off the lights. Maybe that'll help a bit. Whether you're taking an online class or a, a campus-based class, really communicating with the instructor is, is key to your success. All right. If you have questions, ask them. I guess, you know, maybe I get a little long-winded here, but that's what all these words say. <laughs> if you have questions, ask them. And there's a number of ways you can ask the questions, because I realize everyone has their own uh, responsibilities and, and uh, circumstances that not every method works for everyone. You know, Some people would rather discuss things face-to-face -face as opposed to send it via email. Or some people aren't able to make it here during office hours. All right. Um, so therefore, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. First of all, if you're in the online class, you can actually come to class. If there's something that you're really stuck with and you're available during this time frame, you can come to class. All right. If you're in this class and you have questions and you're not, uh, you, you're, you need additional assistance beyond what you're getting in lab, you can come to one of my other classes' labs and get assistance there. You can watch the video recording of the class. You can post to the discussion board. You can email me within Angel. There are chat rooms within Angel. I don't. S I don't uh, permanently have a chat room open, but I can make arrangements for that. You could give me voicemail. I will tell you, email is better than voicemail for me. I check my voicemail constant, or I check my email constantly, where voicemail I only check when I'm on campus. I have not announced yet my office hours for this semester, but effective the second week, there should be office hours and so on. The point is, is I, I've given a lot of opportunities to, for you to, to ask your questions if you have them. All right. Um, so take advantage of one of them if you're having problems. Doesn't matter to me which one, as long as we get your questions resolved. Um, ask questions as soon as you're starting to be confused uh, with something, as opposed to waiting until you're, you're sort of buried deep and, and you, you really are, are completely lost. There's sort of a wild card. If none of these work, we can figure out something else. Like if you can't make it for my office hours, but you want to spend some time asking me questions, I can come in some other time. Or we can talk on the phone or whatever. I've handled this a number of different ways with different students. OK. Syllabus. I promise not to read this word for word to you, because that's boring. Here's some general information about me, information about the class. 
do read this because this is important. This is our focus. This is what everything, all the activities and, and lectures and labs in this class relate to is these outcomes. Text, uh, textbook. You do need something to store your stuff on. Most of you have probably have USB drives, but you could also email it to yourself. You could also use a website called Dropbox that allows you to save stuff up on the web. Uh, any number of different ways. You even have some storage space up on Angel. Um, but if you leave it on the computer and come back the next class, it's not going to be there. These machines have uh, software on them that causes them to be completely wiped every time they're rebooted. All right? uh, it's sort of a, a security um, antivirus thing. We don't really have to worry about viruses then because if a virus happens to slip through, it's going to be gone the next time. But the downside of that is if your machine's rebooted, if you've saved files on it and did not take a copy of your own, then it's gone. Angel will be used to communicate with students. So check Angel um, at least a couple times a week. Um, I will post uh, announcements uh, to Angel. On occasion, if students ask me questions that I don't have a good answer for, I'll do some research and post the answer that way. I'll post any announcements, like if I was not feeling well and not going to make it to class. I'll post uh, that. Um, I also grade and give you feedback on your assignments via Angel. So check Angel a couple times during the week. You know, maybe between classes. You know, maybe sometime on Wednesday, and then sometime um, between uh, weeks. I'll let you read this. Here are some general college policies that you might uh, be aware of. Instructor policies. I am fairly flexible on late work if I've been working with you on it. So for example, if you're in lab or if you're in the online class and you're sending me emails and you're just having trouble getting something down and I'm working with you and you turn it in late, I'm likely not to deduct at all. Because I know you're working on it. I know you're being diligent and working on it. And if it, if it happens that you turn it in a day or so late, hey, as long as you did a good job on it, ultimately that doesn't matter to me. I do reserve the right, though, to deduct for late assignments if students simply just disappear on me and six weeks into the semester turn in the first lab without hearing about it. And that does happen, believe it or not. And, and again, now if there's some circumstances, if you're ill, if you, you, know, you had emergency surgery or something like that, um, by all means, as soon as you can, let me know. All right, because I can be flexible in those cases too. And you don't have to go into great details. I don't need to know private pieces of information about you. But I do think I want to uh, uh, deserve sort of a heads up if there's something that's going to keep you from completing the assignments on time. And when I get that, I can be very flexible. When I don't, I reserve the right to deduct. I go into more detail here. You can read this. <coughs> There'll be a total of 65 points for homework assignments. That's approximately 13 five-point assignments. So there's it's a 15-week semester plus finals week is 16 weeks. So there'll be 13 assignments. So that's why I said almost weekly. They'll each be worth five points each. I do, uh, in some cases, will combine assignments. So maybe you'll have one less assignment, but one of them will be worth 10 points instead of 15, or instead of five points. Your project consists of two pieces, a design and the finished product. And we'll talk about that as the time grows nearer. And then we're at 90, 80, 70 for A, B, C, and D. Here's an approximate schedule to read through to sort of guide your reading. Assignments are due Wednesday of the indicated week. So typically I make an assignment one week, and then it's due the Wednesday of the following week. So for example, week one, that's today, your first lab assignment is out there. That lab is due the Wednesday of week two. So the lab that I've assigned that's out there today 
is due not tomorrow, but the following Wednesday. So every lab is due the Wednesday of the following week from what it's assigned, unless I happen to say otherwise. Okay. The project is due also on Wednesday of the indicated week. The design is due the Wednesday of the week of April 7th. And the final project is due the Wednesday of the week of May 12th. All right. So you have something due every week except this week because, come on, that really wouldn't be fair to have something due this week already. And spring break week. Well, I guess technically you do have an assignment. Uh, I, I indicate that you should have fun during your spring break week. So you, you, do, you have to have a little bit of fun at least. All right. And, but every other week from now till then, you, th there's something that's due. All right. Questions about any of this stuff? I do encourage you to read that. I, I, I really don't like to read things to students. I, I just like to sort of hit the high points, and you can read that to get the details of it. So one thing I would suggest you to do is read through those documents more thoroughly, and at some point within the next couple of weeks, read through the requirements for the semester project. All right. On to making web pages. All right. Let's look at a web page. I brought up the Wall Street Journal's web page. All right. I don't know why I picked that, but I did. All right. And it may be a little hard to see. Maybe that helps a little bit. But well, we can notice that there's a couple of things, a couple of different kinds of things on this page. All right. For example, there's text and there's images. All right. There's two different kinds of content. Right. In going over there, you know, in presenting their data, there's a couple of things. There's text and there's images. What other things can you see on this page besides text and images? Well, there's an advertisement that just popped up. All right. Links to other pages. All right. Anything else? Is all the text on the page the same? How would you describe the difference between this and this? This text here, this text here, and this text here. You could say a heading or a headline and a paragraph. So even beyond text, there's headlines or headings and paragraphs. There's links. This is actually something, this is actually a table of data. All right? It's data that's organized in a row and columns, like you'd see in an Excel spreadsheet. And as we mentioned, there are links to different pages. What we're describing is we're describing all the different content that exists on this page. And most web pages are going to have those, those things. There's probably going to be some kind of headers of some sort that sort of identify the main sections. There's going to be, likely there's going to be text uh, on the page. There's probably going to be some sort of images. Um, there could be tables. There could be, like in this case, there's a search box, a text box, and a button. All right. All this is different kinds of content that are on the web page. All right. There's other things too that don't seem to be on this web page, but are on others. Things like audio files or animations. Actually, there is a little bit of an animation. This sort of animated um, ticker seems to be scrolling, if I remember right. 
and audio and video and all those things are different pieces of content that are on the page. All right. Content is one important aspect of a web page. Right? That's why people are visiting your web page. You know, they're there not to see the pretty colors or to see the smart layout that you have or anything like that. They're there to, to read your content. All right. In addition to content, though, there's the appearance of the web page. In other words, if we're going to look at the difference between these two pieces of text, this one over here and this over here, we notice number one is, might be a little hard for you to see, but they're actually different colors. This is, this is a dark blue, this is black. All right. We also notice that these are different fonts. All right. How do I know they're different fonts? Let's zoom in a little bit here. F here doesn't have those little thingies down there, which are called serifs. So there's a different font. All right. So in addition to the content of the page, there's also the appearance of the page. There's the information that's on the page and the way that we're going to make the information look on the page. All right. There are actually two different languages that we're going to learn that relate to these two different aspects of a web page. There's the content of the web page. In other words, there's going to be a way for us to say, this is a headline. This is a paragraph. There is also going to be a way for us to control the appearance of it. In other words, this headline, I want to be blue and use this kind of font. This I want to be black and use a different kind of font. The language that we're going to use for the content of the web page, the language for the content of web page is called HTML. The language used for the appearance of the page is called CSS. All right. CSS stands for cascading style sheets. And we're going to put that one on the back burner for a while. We're not going to really do anything about the appearance of the page. And we'll let the web browser decide how to display things. The way your page looks really depends on two factors. Your code, your CSS code, and some defaults that are sort of built into the browser. What's a browser again? A browser is a, is a program that we use to view web pages. It's the, the like Internet Explorer, or Firefox, or Google Chrome. Those are examples of browsers. So if, we, if, if it's not specified how to display certain content, the browser has its own rules and will display certain content a certain way. So our focus is first of all going to be on the content of the web page, on describing to the browser what our different content is. Now, HTML In information technology, there's like about a million of these different acronyms where letters stand for different things. And HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. All right. I'm going to focus on the first two words there, hypertext and markup, because I think we all sort of have an idea of what a language is. So I don't really need to specify that. Any idea what we mean when we say hypertext? Are there any science fiction fans out there? 
oh, come on, there can't be a web development class without one science fiction fan in here. I guess there could be. Well, you know, when Kirk tells Spock or Scotty or whoever to engage the hyperdrive, anytime you see the word hyper, it sort of means like, sort of like beyond. You know, if you talk about someone that's hyperactive, they're more active than normal. If you talk about, you know, hyperspace, it's somewhere out there beyond regular space. All right? So the word hyper sort of means more than, above, and beyond. So hypertext simply is indicating that with HTML, we can do more than just having plain text, right? We already knew that, right? Because we knew that there were things such as links and images and headings and things of that sort. So hypertext markup language, the hypertext means that with this language, we can create documents that have more than just plain old text on it. So we can create documents that have links on it. We can create documents that have headlines and paragraphs. All right? Images, videos, audio, animation. So that's what the HT stands for, hypertext. Markup is kind of like this. Good. I use this every semester. I hope they never take this away. Here's a book, and let's pretend this was our textbook. All right. Now, some students do this. Not all students, but some students do this. If, if the professor is going over something and says, page 79, see that paragraph? That's really important. All right, that's going to be on the test. What do some students do? Well, I'm not going to do it because this is a black highlighter, but some students will somehow put some indication or marking on it that, hey, that's important. I better study this. I'm going to mark it up this way with a box around it and stars. And then maybe if they say, this is also important, I'm going to mark it up the same way. Now, if the professor says, yeah, this paragraph here, um, that's kind of out of date. That's outdated. We don't, we're not really going to worry about that. You might go and put a big old X through it to say, hey, that's not important. We don't need to worry about that. What are you doing? Quite literally, you're marking up this document. All right? You're putting physical marks in the document. And why are you putting those marks? Why are you marking up this document? You're marking up the document to give some extra meaning. In other words, these aren't just words. These are important words because they're going to be on the test. These aren't just words. These are also important words that are going to be on the test. These are not just plain words. These are words that I can ignore because the professor says that they're outdated. So you're taking the words in the book and you're marking it up to give extra meaning to them, to explain what, not what those words are, but the significance of those words. All right? And that's exactly what we do in HTML. We're going to have a plain text docu document, but we're going to mark it up to tell the browser the significance of each thing on our page. So let me give you an example. And I'm going to create a fragment of an HTML page now. All right? I'm going to create a fragment. And I'll come back and finish this either today or in our next class. So let me go, and I'm going to create a fragment of an HTML page. I'm going to create a fragment of an HTML page that talks about my spring 2014 classes. 
some of them anyhow. Okay, so you can read the text, Spring 2014 Classes, Web Development, paragraph. Uh, uh, this class is taught Tuesdays and Thursdays. But if you notice, I've marked up that text, all right? I've put what are called tags around the text. And those tags are what tell the browser the significance of those words. For example, any idea what H1 means? It means a heading one. It's a top level heading. Think about it in an English class if you're making an outline. You know, if you're making an outline, you might have sections of your paper. The ones that are sort of the top level, those would be H1s. H2 then is sort of secondary level. So if you're doing an outline, it wouldn't be a main topic, but it would be a subtopic underneath that. All right? So that's what H1 and H2 means. P, what do you suppose that means? This is a paragraph. Right. So let's look at this, and let's look a little closer at the tags. How do we know what tags are? Well, tags are on these angle brackets, or contained within these angled brackets, or the, the, the greater than and less than sign for math class. Less than and greater than sign for math class. Every tag comes in pairs. All right? So notice that there is this at the beginning of the text. Then there's this at the end of the text. This is called a starting tag. This is called an ending tag. What's the difference between the ending tag and the starting tag? Well, the ending tag has a slash before it. That's what indicates that that's an ending tag. And so they go together. What that is telling the web browser is everything between the start and end tag, I want to treat a certain way. Just like in my book here, where I marked up, whereas everything between here and here is important, is on the test, everything between the H1 at the beginning and the end H1 at the end, I'm telling the browser something about it. And what am I telling about it? I'm telling it's not just a regular old paragraph. It's a heading. It's a headline or a heading. All right? Same thing with H2, except it's sort of a secondary heading. It's sort of a subheading. In other words, it's part of that. So, for example, I could do this and put another one of my classes. In other words, logically, if we're making an outline, this and this in the outline is sort of underneath that. It's sort of part of that section, right? You know, the H1, that's the main header. These are sort of subheaders under that. I could then have another H1 for maybe my summer classes and have some H2s underneath there. All right? So it's not necessarily just one H H1 or one H2. 
And you don't number them based on their sequence. In other words, you don't make the first one H1, the second one H2, the third one H3. You number them according to their importance of where they fit sort of in the structure. So these two are both sort of underneath this. So this is an H1, these two are H2s. Okay, so this is sort of a fragment of a web page. So we'll go in and let's view how this is seen in the browser. All right. In this class, we're going to look at web pages two ways. All right. Just like a doctor, if you come in with an injured leg, a doctor might look at your leg two ways. The doctor may visually inspect it, you know, to see if there's swelling, redness, bruises, whatever. All right. Then a doctor may have an x-ray and look at the x-ray for it. It's still the same leg, right? They're just looking at it two different ways. Well, in web page development, this is sort of like the x-ray. This is showing us the code that's inside the web page. This is not how people are going to be viewing your web page. People are going to be viewing your web page through the browser. They're going to see sort of the end result of all this code. So, how do we save this as a web page? I use Notepad in this class, and you can use any text editor that you want to in this class. To save it, a couple things are important. First of all, where it says save as type text document, you need to change that to say all files. And then you need to give uh, in the file with .html. So, I'll say I'll call this file first.html. And I'll save it on my desktop. And I'll click Save. So there it is. There's the file first.html. Now, this file is the same file as this file. It's just we're viewing it two different ways. Now, if I double click this file, it's going to open it up in my default browser, which is Google Chrome. So I double click on that, and that shows me what the web page looks like if a person would view it in the browser. All right. Notice the H1 is the biggest header, right? The most important headers should probably be the biggest one. The H2s are a little bit smaller than that. And then the paragraph is sort of just plain text. All right. Now, we didn't do anything to specify how this page should look, so the browser applied its own rules to it. And so, without putting any CSS code in here, this is what we get. And if we go in and we make this smaller, the browser does a good job resizing it so that everything fits. Now, really to drive the point home, because this confuses a lot of students every, every semester, this file here and this file here are the exact same file. I'm just looking at it two different ways. This is sort of the view that your average person is going to see of it when they view it through a web browser. That's like the doctor looking at your leg, just looking at the surface of your leg. This is sort of the x-ray. This is getting down and seeing the in internal structure of that page. All right. What did I do to save this? Again, remember, I went in and I said save, and I saved it as a .html file. And instead of saying save it as a text file, I, I chose all files there. Now, you know you did it right if you see your browser icon. Depending on your machine, that could be the little Internet Explorer icon or Firefox icon or on this machine, the Google Chrome icon. All right, the last thing I want to do is I want to, I said this is a fragment of a web page. I'm going to put in, without a lot of explanation, but I'm going to put in just so that we have a completed web page, I'm going to put in some other tags that we need to complete it. All right. All 
first one isn't really a tag. It's a doc type, which tells the browser essentially like what version of HTML you're using. The next tag is an HTML tag, which goes around everything. And again, it simply tells the browser, hey, we're dealing with an HTML file here. There's a head section that contains information about the page. Anything that we want to see on the page itself will be in the body section. So every page that you make is going to have these things in it. It's going to have a doc type, an HTML, a head section that contains a title, a body section that contains the page itself. And then it's going to have the ending tags for that. Now, I kind of rushed through that. Um, if you didn't catch it all, that's okay. We'll pick up on this on Thursday and go over this in more detail. Let's view it one more time in the browser to see if it changed any. And we'll find that it really didn't change much. There'll be one subtle little change here. And that is. Notice the tab up here contains my title. And if I minimize it, I can see the title there, CISS first page. So it's important to give your page a descriptive title. That helps the user keep track of it. All right. So there's a certain shell that you're going to have on every web page, and then you're going to fill in that shell with the content specific of that web page. All right? Your first lab assignment is to go and do some research on some of the technologies that we're going to cover in this class and some of the concepts. And read about them and create a web page that contains links to those pages and summarizes what you found. Now, we haven't talked about creating links yet, and we've just really gone over one example. You can at the very least start by doing the research and finding information about them and, and saving the links that you are going to use when you create the page. All right? You can, if you wish, practice this thing, what I did right here in class. Make a page of your own, all right, similar to this. And you can even start working on your lab assignment, but unless you read ahead in the book, um, we, haven't, uh, we haven't covered everything that you need to know to complete this assignment. We'll pick that up on Thursday. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, I do not know if it's in yet. I'll, I'll check. Uh, I'll check uh, today. There was, there was a slip up that I am assuming was probably my fault. Uh, and uh, they, they said it would be in probably uh, end of last week or early this week. So, so we'll go in and check. Um, OK. All right, I guess no need for me to check then. All right. Uh, yeah, just check back. Uh, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, based on this, you know, you have enough to get started on your lab assignments anyhow. Other questions? All righty, we'll see you over, over in lab. Oh, yeah, go ahead. What version of HTML it is? Yeah, it's, it's a little confusing. Um, this tag will always be HTML. This, if you're using different versions of HTML, might be slightly different. All right. Um, this tells the browser where your HTML document begins and ends. 
this tells the browser what version of HTML you're using. That actually, even though, even though it's not obvious, that tells the browser you're using HTML5. Uh, earlier doc types were much longer and convoluted. Um, and they would look a lot different than that, but you'd still have an HTML tag following them. For the lab? Uh, for the lab, I, I ask you to go out and I like, do Google searches on a couple of topics. Okay, so it, it will be in the week one folder for lab one, correct. All right.